Hello and welcome in to another episode of the Fantasy Football Forecast. I'm Trevor Scott here with my co-host, Matt. What's going on, guys? And we are going to be doing something a little bit different on Monday. Um, we're going to be, as mentioned earlier, if you've been following along with us, uh, we're going to get into the A.J. Brown, Garrett Wilson, Puka Nakua debate. Those three are going as wide receiver six, seven, and eight currently. And it seems like there's a lot of different opinions between those three, who you should take first. Um, and it's going to be a decision that a lot of you are going to have to make this year. Uh, so we're going to dive into that on Monday here. So Matt, take it away. So first and foremost, I'm curious how you have these guys ranked because I've got it. AJ Brown, Garrett Wilson, Puka Nakua, Fantasy Pros has it Brown, Nakua, Wilson. And then if you look at you know, underdog ADP. So people that are, you know, actually spending money to draft these teams right now have it Puka, AJ, Garrett. So I'm very curious how how you have it ranked because we didn't we didn't really get a chance to talk about it beforehand. Yeah, I also have it ranked AJ Brown, Garrett Wilson, Puka Nakua. Um, well, that's and so fun. I know, right? No, no disparity <laughs> between us. But I think what we're gonna get into is the fact that a lot of people making fantasy football content right now are drafting Puka as like the locked in number six wide receiver. You know, you have, you have multiple other um, analysts kind of just moving him all the way up. And I'm not even sure that I'd have Puka at eight. Um, you know, so we can get into, we can get into that when we talk um, about him okay. and his section. Um, also just wanna, wanna remember, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. And also um, if you're enjoying the content, uh, leave a comment down below and let us know how you would rank these three wide receivers. And if you have any insight as to who you think should be in this group, or if, you know, you think we're crazy for having AJ Brown at the top, um, despite him falling off, uh, let us know about it. So, um, all right, let's get into AJ Brown then a little bit. Um, you want to, you want to take it away in terms of teeing him up? Uh, yeah, I, I, I think for, for me, the reason I have him, you know, the highest in this tier is, is a couple of reasons, you know, for one, you know, there's, there's no projection involved with AJ Brown. Like we've seen him, you know, be dominant year over year, but you know, it's not like he's in his thirties. Like he's, he's 26 years old. He just signed a massive three-year extension. He's the number one target, you know, Philly offense is going to be rolling. And, you know, we've seen his ability to, to really take over the games and, you know, with someone like a Garrett Wilson, you know, there's obviously more of a projection involved puka there's the risk of you know cup coming and we'll you know we'll we'll dive into those guys more and more but you know for me with with aj brown the the projection is almost a positive you know you have um the new oc kellen moore coming in and I'm not 100 percent sure i'm sold on him but you know the offense that they ran last year was you know very elementary school vanilla just never over the middle not creative at all and yeah. you know we've seen Kellen Moore on his teams, you know, really like the feature of the wide receiver. Like we saw what Keenan was doing last year before, you know, he unfortunately got hurt. We saw the year before that with CD Lamb. So, you know, if I'm baking in a projection, like I'm, the more I research I do, the more excited I am to, you know, lock AJ into this top spot for this tier. Yeah. And I think some people are probably running away from AJ compared to Puka just because he kind of started slow and then he had that super hot stretch where he had like five straight games of over 125 yards. And then he started to not do so well <clears throat> towards the end of the year, um, you know, kind of fell off. The overall offense fell off. Then it was like there was him complaining on the sidelines and all this unrest, you know? And so I think people might look at that from a narrative perspective and say, look, I want the guy that's knows the grindstone second year, like just had a, just had a record breaking rookie season. But like, for me, I'm taking the established player. Like you said, he's, he's only 26. It feels like he's boring and has been around for a long time, but really he's still very young, still very much yeah. in his prime. And the main thing I always said about Brown that I never understood about last year's offense is he just was running so many routes just straight up on the sideline. They didn't, they didn't send their receivers over the middle of the field hardly at all. And I think the offensive coordinator got fired for it. Um, you know, they were just looking at the route concepts and the um, overall offensive efficiency. And 
it, it just didn't make any sense for the personnel you have with AJ Brown. And I think Kellen Moore coming in is going to make all the difference in terms of that. I think he's going to be scheming up um, all kinds of play action. They have Saquon now out of the backfield, which is going to pull those linebackers that uh, pull those linebackers up to the line of scrimmage. And AJ Brown's going to be able to run behind them a lot. Uh, kind of like they did a lot with him in Tennessee with, with uh, Derek Henry. So mm -hmm. I expect AJ Brown to be awesome. I expect him to run a lot of different routes than he did last year. And I expect him to be the best of this group. And, and I think that he's the one of this group that can push that upper tier. You know, we talk about maybe making a tier jump. And, and I think there's a legitimate chance that he ends up as like the wide receiver three or four this year. Um, mm -hmm. Just because we also last year saw him increase his target volume from the year before. That was something I wasn't sure he was going to be able to do. He was down in the 140 range, 145, and he was up at 158 this past year. And if he does that again over 17 games, you know, that's that's over nine targets a game. If he if he increases that volume at all, it's going to be really scary, I think. So I, I'm all in on A.J. Brown. If I can get him in the second round, I'm, I currently am sitting in our nine spot for the draft, you know, if uh, depending on how the wide receivers and quarterbacks go in the first round, you know, in the, in the second round there, if I move up a little bit, you know, but I could see top 15 and super flex for AJ Brown. Pretty, pretty easy. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And then just, I guess to touch on too, you know, they, they did draft two wide receivers kind of in the later rounds. So just a couple, you know, those guys don't necessarily scare me in terms of taking away from AJ Brown, but um, maybe that has something to do with, you know, if you haven't seen these wide receivers that they drafted, they're, they're kind of funny guys to, to watch. So one of them's like six, seven, Johnny Wilson out of Florida state. He'll, he'll probably get some, you know, red zone targets. And then the other guy, Anaya Smith, who I know we talked about in our wide receiver preview show. And if you haven't seen that, go ahead and check that out, but he's probably going to be used more in like the kick return game and kickoffs and kind of as, as a gadget guy. So, you know, they, they did draft a couple guys, so maybe that's scaring people away, but I wouldn't, you know, expect them to be taking any serious volume away from AJ. Yeah, I, I can't imagine that rookie late round picks are scaring anybody away from AJ Brown. Yeah, but <laughs> but maybe. So I mean, it's a good good point to bring up. And I think um, even even after all of the perceived struggles last year, he still finishes wide receiver seven. Yeah. So to me, it just seems silly to push him down when he's just such an established player. You see it happen kind of a lot, I would say, in fantasy where you have an established player that becomes boring, gets pushed down drafts for the new hot thing like Puka. Mm -hmm. And you look back and you're like, how, how did we not at least consider or talk about the three-year past prospect You know, of how good this player was? Um, and I think that's a little bit of what I'm going to do with AJ Brown. I'm just going to lean on how good of a player he is and how productive he's been so far in his career and add the excitement in with the new offensive coordinator. And he's, he's my guy at this group. Love it. All right, Garrett Wilson. So kind of the opposite of AJ Brown in the sense that, you know, we are going to be projecting a little bit and obviously He's had two years of probably the worst quarterback play in the history of a number one wide receiver. And, you know, he finished wide receiver 19 last year. He got a bunch of targets, but the offense was just anemic. <laughs> right receiver 31 the year before that. But I don't know. The roster's good. They they get Aaron Rodgers back. Like Garrett Wilson, you know, he was a top 15 pick. Like he's got all the talent in the world. I know that in a previous episode, you kind of talked about his upside being like almost like a CD Lamb type type year so why don't you dive into you know Garrett a little bit why you have him you know where you have him and kind of your thoughts on on drafting him yeah and and building off of what you said about the worst quarterback play in the league like I would I would venture to say straight up that he had the worst quarterback play combined over the last two years and yeah. despite that he had back-to-back -back thousand yard seasons um you know, he's going into year three. The offense is going to be better now, right? Brees Hall is fully up to speed. We don't have to worry about his limited touches or anything coming off ACL surgery. Uh, Aaron Rodgers is going to be healthy, right? Assuming 
obviously we thought that going into last year, but you know, he's not going to get hurt four snaps into this season. Um, and I, I personally think that fixing their backup quarterback situation is going to provide a bigger safety net for Wilson than he had with Zach Wilson. Right. I mean, they, mm -hmm. they went out and they signed Tyrod Taylor who, you know, he obviously is kind of a journeyman at this point, but he's a very good productive quarterback. He can get the ball down the field. Um, he can, get the ball to Wilson, right? I don't have any worry that Wilson's just going to fall off the map, kind of like he did for three or four weeks while Zach Wilson was fumbling through trying to get caught back up in the offense. So my opinion on that is that Garrett Wilson has a bigger safety net, but with Aaron Rodgers, the upside is just through the roof. I mean, the, the quarterback play that he's been getting has been league worst, and now he's going to be getting one that's going to be targeted constantly too with Rodgers, right? We know we saw him lock on to Jordy Nelson. We saw him lock on to Devontae Adams. He really likes to have that number one go-to guy, Rodgers does. And so I think that's going to be Wilson. He doesn't have um he doesn't have a situation either where he's going to get double and triple covered because he's got Mike Williams on the other side of the field from him as well. So you know there's going to be uh, down the field threat with Williams, there's going to be safety help rolling that way. I mean, that's a legitimate number two wide receiver. And so I think that there's an opportunity here for like 170 targets, 175 targets. And with that level of target share and that volume from Rogers, I think we could see an unbelievably explosive season here, like 120 catch, 1550 yards and 12 touchdown type of season, you know, like just a, just a, number yeah. a true number one receiver here and obviously like you mentioned it's a lot of projection and it's a lot of like what like like really hitting a ceiling but this isn't a player i'm uncomfortable saying the ceiling for because that's what if everything kind of goes well and all of the offensive pieces are able to stay relatively in place or relatively healthy he's going to have a massive season yeah no, I, I agree. And I guess just touching on, you know, heading into last season, you know, it, it really seemed like they had a, a quickly established rapport. And we know that Rodgers with, you know, younger receivers, sometimes it, it takes a while, but, you know, he, maybe it was just the hard knocks thing, but it, it really seemed like they, they had a connection and he trusted him and he is going to be their number one. And I guess touching on kind of where he finished in you know, the last couple of years, a lot of that too, is just, you know, lack of touchdowns. And so, you know, this, that should obviously increase a lot and his targets are going to be more accurate. So he's someone I'm really excited to draft. I, I've done a few mocks where I've taken, you know, AJ Brown and Garrett Wilson at the turn. So uh, yeah, man, I, I wish him the best because I, I loved watching him at Ohio State and it, it's sad to see his quarterback play downgrade so badly in the NFL. Um, but well, cool. Uh, Puka, I, I know you're probably more out on him than consensus. So maybe I'll, I'll let you dive into to why. Yeah, and so these these other two guys, right? I, I talked about how they are like bona fide stars. They're, they're number one receivers. Uh, Puka is probably going to be a number one receiver. And I think that's my biggest concern here is that Cooper Cup last year came into the year with the hamstring injury he didn't play the first four weeks. Then he had a couple of good weeks, but then continued to struggle looking explosive. And I think he just struggled to be healthy, be fully healthy all year, just constantly playing catch up from a, from a um, perspective of a little bit of an older player and just never quite got right. <clears throat> so that allowed Puka last year to just be the full target getter, right? The full, he got all this volume. He obviously set all rookie records and I don't want to discount that, right? He's obviously an extremely good player, um, but it's not exactly like he was a top flight prospect that did this either, right? It's a fifth round pick. And I know McVay is very good at scheming players open and Puka in his own right played very well. But like I said, I, I just think that there's, there's some red flags here for me in terms of I think Cup is going, as long as Cup anyways is healthy going into the year, I think there's going to be more of a target emphasis there on that than either of these other players have from anybody else. And I think that 
as good as Puka was, I am very worried in this case of a sophomore slump of somebody that didn't necessarily have the pedigree, that didn't necessarily have this high round draft stock, right? And we saw something that's never been done. And so I'm just worried that like any amount of step back is going to be a letdown. It's going to be a disappointment. And I feel like a lot of the analysis I'm hearing on him is look at what he did as a rookie. Imagine if he does this, imagine if, mm-hmm. you know, he takes over yeah. as the one, imagine if he's the one, Hey, imagine if, and it's, and it's like, yeah, that's all good to, to look at, but we kind of just saw what happened when that, right. Like he already was the one a last year. He was the one last year. Like, so right. there isn't imagining more upside in my eyes, right. What he did is his ceiling. That is what he can do. And I'm afraid of a, of a touchdown regression of target regression because cup is healthy. And so, Again, I really like Puka. I don't want to say like I'm not drafting Puka. That's not the case at all. It's just putting him up at six. I'm going to end up with no Puka because I just feel like he's more like wide receiver 10. And, you know, it's somebody that if I can get at the end of the second round of a super of a super flex league, right? Or at the, you know, top 15, top 12, maybe of a uh, three wide receiver, uh, half PPR, uh, one quarterback league. Right. I would I would do something like I, I would feel more comfortable in that area than but that. I mean, that's just taking not him in the middle happen, of the first you know? round. That's yeah. not what hey, that's just not going to happen. You know, right. Just like, that's why I'm things. down on him. I'm just if I can get him there, then. And that's why I frame it like that. Right. Like everybody's going to be like, oh, you know, Trevor, Trevor just wants Puka later, you know, so that's why he's saying this. And it's like, I, I don't I don't think that I would take him a little later. Yeah. It's just not where he's going. I'm not going to be taking him over AJ Brown. I'm not going to be taking him over Garrett Wilson. So, so like when I see, and when I see like such a consensus among smart analysts pushing him up above those guys, I'm like, why, what am I missing here? I feel like I'm genuinely missing something. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I mean, I think they were on the field together for 10 or so games last year. And, you know, Puka was the one, but I think their positions were like wide receiver 12 versus wide receiver 23. So a couple touchdowns here or there could have, you know, flip-flopped it. And to me, um, you know, I don't even think Cup was ever really fully healthy during that time. And he's got that rapport with Stafford over the years. Like, he's someone that I'm going to be drafting a lot more of, too, because of, you know, where I can get him. Um, and I know I talked about him in our mock draft episode, taking him pretty late. But, but yeah, man, I, uh, I, you know, I've got him in this tier for now because just, you know, looking at the other guys, like, not really – comfortable putting Devonte or Ayuk or Harrison or Lave there yet, but, you know, we'll see as, as the summer goes on, but, uh, but yeah. All right. Awesome. And with that, you have our rankings now, AJ Brown, Garrett Wilson, and Puka Nakua in that order. And uh, we look forward to continuing our 32 team breakdown with the AFC South starting tomorrow. So we'll see you guys then. Later.